Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to Planet Zoo, shall we? I thought, you know, there's still some more things to explain as we kind of work on growing our franchise mode zoo, and I've decided to pick us up some giant tortoises. And the giant tortoise, um, as you can see here, they have a pretty good appeal rating, and you can get them both for cash or for conservation credits. I have already purchased three of them right here. Uh, just as I was poking around, I didn't want the listings to expire. I got one for conservation points. I spent 100 on it, and the others I got very cheaply for like four or $500 uh, dollars each. So they're not really that expensive. Um, I got, and if we look at this animal and we go over to the Zoopedia, um, the giant tortoise looks awesome, first of all. And then in their habitat, okay, you can see that they don't require that much land. Obviously, they don't need a large fence. And they have neutral relations with humans, and guests can enter the habitat with them. Now, I, I got these just because I like turtles, and, you know, let's just keep adding to our zoo. And these are pretty low maintenance. They live for a long time as well, which I like. But do not be confused by this. I kind of want to warn you that um, even though guests can enter the habitat, I've created a, dis a habitat like this in the past where you can create a path for guests to kind of come into the habitat and observe the animals more closely. And they don't mind, you know, guests entering their habitat. But what's interesting is that um, they're extremely shy and they don't like it. So if people are watching them, so yes, they can enter the habitat, but you need to create all of these places for them to kind of hide. So in my experience, it actually ended up being a bad idea to let guests enter their habitat. So that's just my um, experience with it. And, you know, I feel like you always have to watch out for something like that and be careful that even though it says that, you know, they have a neutral relationship some animals are better than others for allowing guests in their habitat. So I pick turtles because they have high appeal um, and they're pretty cheap, right? Like if you look at this animal's appeal, the aardvark has higher appeal, but turtles live a long time, are easy to maintain. They have very few requirements. So this will be a nice, smooth addition to our zoo. Now, of course, always pick what you want and Next, we're going to uh, try a more difficult species, but I like to stack the deck in my favor and just add some variety to my zoo with uncomplicated animals and also animals that I just personally like. I love turtles. So we have a player visiting, so let's say hello and pick up the conservation points for doing that. And then let's see, what are our current challenges adopt and place two different habitat species so we're working towards that that's one of them and we need to increase conservation rating to 1.0 stars right now we have 0.2 uh so let's try to continue that okay and let's see here i'm going to go into the zoo animal trading and over here in storage and let's just look um here they are they're just chilling and let's go and let's take a gander at um the habitat so we need a habitat and i'm gonna remember you can adjust this to be three adults because that's what we have so with three adults all we have to have is a grade one barrier that's at least 2500 square feet land requirement they don't need climbing they don't need water they don't need deep water they you know, the temperature is well within range and, you know, for decoration purposes, it's a tropical biome um, and the continent is Africa. So no problem there. We'll just go ahead and go into barriers. And we've been building, you know, these cheap barriers. And I think that we can maybe 
start to upgrade our barrier game a bit if we want to nicer ones. Uh, don't have to do this, of course, but uh, we can, you know, get ourselves uh, something that's a little fancier if we so wish. This is corrugated. It's resistance grade two and it's a dollar per um, unit. And that's what we've been using. But if you want, now that we have a little bit more money to play around with, you could upgrade and let's try it. Let's go with a wood habitat just to slowly get more. Now, you can always replace this if you want later down the road to have a consistent zoo where like all of your barriers match and are identical. And that's certainly well within your rights. So what you wanna do is just kind of zoom out and then look at your zoo and think about where would be a good place for this habitat you need to be you know mindful of negative impact from buildings that the guests don't like as well as you want to be close to bathrooms and um, overall not make your people have to walk too much because they will get tired but i think right here is a good location we can actually extend our little food court and kind of maybe wrap it around and and put this as part of this uh, existing situation so even people over here in the line can maybe see this now I am going to actually give a little bit of a buffer of space right here in case we want to do something with this now you can always go to your heat map push H and just check out negative impact but none of these buildings are negative now this is um, negative and it's because the you might be like why is that the case this bench is broken. Somebody has broken it. So we need a maintenance person to come over and fix that. And people don't like seeing broken stuff. It's like just a drag. They they think your zoo is not well maintained and it kind of psychologically ruins their experience. So we'll get somebody on that. In fact, if I um, target this, uh, it's been vandalized and it's non-functional. Okay, this bench right here, you can just pay, pen 25 bucks and replace it immediately and if i unpause the game boom it fixes and we're good so it's really not that big of a deal you don't even have to have your maintenance person come over and do it you can do it but that heat map allows you to identify where those things are a little quicker and so we had some vandalism so let's just take a moment and see how many um let's look at our staff and how many security guards do i have i have two so it's surprising this one is tired um but you know, I have two security guards, so it's they should not be able to get away with vandalism. But another way that you can help protect against people vandalizing your stuff and pickpocketing and things like that is if you go into facilities and then you check out um, security. In the security tab, you can build camera posts and wall-mounted cameras to kind of um, help deter crime. So in this area, we had a crime. This is more expensive, but if I just put this wall-mounted camera, you know, right here, I'm just gonna snap it to the side there, and I'm gonna just click exit, and good. Now I did edit the group right there with this camera because if I decide to move this building or something like that, I want it to move with me. But you can see that this camera um, is going to view the area and then if I go to the heat maps and I go to security and crime you can see that this camera has a area of influence where it's protecting and what we want is cameras and guards and so you can see like okay the guards are over in this area this camera you if you highlight it you see its sphere of influence right there and then you notice that like there's lots of stuff that's unprotected so you can, if you want, um, we'll just keep it on cameras and guards right now. We can drop in some more cameras. And I, at first, like, I don't like to do this because I don't want to be all, you know, big brother is watching you. But at the same time, I don't want people to get pickpocketed at the zoo. They have a negative experience. They, uh, they give you a negative review. And it affects uh, your, your zoo um, negatively in a few ways to have vandalism and pickpocketing. So to deter that, we can just go ahead and drop some of these in. Now, I like the wall cameras uh, because they're cheaper. And you can, like, let's just snap it on that light post right there. That's pretty cool. And then I'm going to snap another one on this light post. You know, just double duty with this. 
the orientation of the camera doesn't matter, just the sphere of influence. There's a little bit of a gap here. There's one. And then we can just kind of put these around to... Oh, that one did not place correctly. It like, placed on the ground right there, which is uh, quite bizarre looking. So I'm just going to uh, select this, and I'm just going to push M to move it, and then get it to snap where I want. There we go. And then I'm just going to duplicate this. I'm going to go back to my heat map, just so when I'm placing it, I know where I'm getting coverage. We probably need one right here. These do have a bit of an upkeep cost to them. It's not prohibitive, though. So um, we can definitely afford to do this for the well-being of our guests and of our stuff. We don't want, like... They can break your monitors. They can break all kinds of different things. We don't need to uh, do it to the staff area because the guests can't get into the staff area. So I think that this is much better. You just need to cover the places where... Um, the guests can get, like, along the path. I'm going to put another one here, and now I feel much better about our coverage for security. Okay, so no more vandalism and pickpocketing, please. Now, while we're thinking about it, there's so much to manage in this game, which is why it's fun. Notice these cues. So at first, with our zoo size, these cues were workable, but you see how they're starting to bump up into each other? And we can see that, like, this person is waiting a long time. Um, and they complained there wasn't much to see. Well, we're going to add to that. And they need to go to the bathroom. But then they got that fixed right by here. And let's see, this employee right here, you can see who's working here. And you can see this is Melissa Nobles, okay? Now, if you go, um, let's see, I want to talk to her. So I'm going to go to Zoo, I'm going to go to Staff, and I'm going to go down to Vendors, and I'm going to go to um, Melissa Nobles. And you'll notice how um, you can train your staff to upgrade them. So I'm getting off of the turtle train for a moment because this is something extremely important that I think uh, I didn't notice the first time I played. It's very inexpensive to train your staff, and they just will perform better. So you see how there's a queue right here. Well, you could just build another Looney Bloons, you know, to perhaps mitigate the queue. But another great way to help with these lines is to make the existing stations more efficient by having the staff work faster and give people a more positive experience. So I'm just going to click the up arrow on these people. But you can also just click everyone by clicking this check mark in the upper left corner. You've selected all of your staff. And then you can say, I want to upgrade all of the staff. And it says it will cost me $1,300 to train everyone to the next level. And I'm going to do that. It's quite expensive. And it's the reason it's expensive is because the more skilled employees you have, like the vets, they cost a lot more to train because, you know, um, these have a high workload. We might need to get another... Um, and the vendors have a high workload. We might need to hire more staff. But in the meantime, I am going to spend the money to train everyone. Now, once they, um, you've selected them for training, you'll see that the star is like white and bordered but not filled in. And they will have to actually go get training um, on their break, I believe, or it just takes time. And then they will get that star. You can't train them again until they actually get the training. So we noticed that we have some staff with high workload in the red right here. So let's go ahead... And let me look at entry zone, entry center, entry center. Um, these are the work zones that these vets are working at. And what I might do is just drop in a vet that is not bound to a work zone. And also um, go back and hire another vendor and drop them in. And then just unpause the game. And I'm going to push escape. And you'll see that um, Jewel has no um, work zone. So that means that Jewel could work anywhere. But what you can also do just to ensure that, you go to Zoo, you go to your staff, and then you click where it says work zone. Um, and you could give them a work zone. Or um, if you don't, oops, I squashed it. They should work anywhere. So let's follow them. 
and see if they're actually indeed going to work. So I'll go to zoo staff and I'm going to um, center the camera on them. And look, this, they already checked the aardvark home habitat. So they're going around and you can see up here in the upper right, this is what they're doing. They're inspecting timber time. So this is great. So they're going to go ahead and just potentially free the workload up from some of our other vets. All right. So now we've tried to address some staff issues and we've trained our staff. This is great. Let's go ahead and go back to barriers and start actually building our um, turtle town. That's a good name. So I'm going to build a wooden wall right here. And I'm going to try to just retrofit this in with the existing paths that we have. Remember, you can just use the minus key to make this a little bit smaller. And you, you can um, toggle off the angle snap right here so that you can kind of put this wherever you want. I am going to toggle it off because I have a kind of a weird space. So I'm going to just build these like this. And I'm going to just kind of wrap this around in these rounded segments like so and then connect this right here. And what I always do when I've got it like this is I will then put on a gate and this will be like, you know, where the staff can get in like that. And I'm going to just say, okay, great. And then now this is a habitat and we can see how big it is. How big is this? This is 5,000 square feet and it's actually almost too big. And why is that an issue? Remember, you want your guests to be able to get close enough to see it. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click Edit Barrier, and I'm going to shrink this up a little bit. I'm going to um, pull this in. Let's see here. No, not the whole thing, just this segment. Mm, here, click on this, and oops, um, don't do that. Here, just grab this, and let me see here. Yeah, I'm just going to right-click it to delete it. And I'm going to kind of bring this in a bit like this. And I'm going to just right click and right click. And then now I'm going to push escape and check the habitat. And it is 4,000 square feet. And I'm okay with this. It's bigger than what they need. But if they have babies, then they're going to need some more space. And I always like to have a little bit more. All right. So now we have a good shape to our habitat. And now it's time to work on the path. So it auto selects the path that you already have. I'm going to push the square bracket to just make this path as wide as the path that's already there. And just kind of walk this around. You can push plus if you want this to get a little bit longer, but I want to have a little bit more control over the pathing. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to make this much shorter so that I can then join that perfect like that okay so now we have a path that goes all the way around this habitat i'm going to uh, just push escape to close the path and as i look um, we're going to need to start editing the barrier to add windows so people can actually see these tortoises we're going to add a lot of windows so i'm going to um, click on this and i'm going to edit the barrier and we can do wooded habitat gate that's not what we want we want windows 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 and as far as windows go we can click on window here and just put in glass like this or um, we can add glass barriers but I'm just going to do it like this and I'm actually going to um, select just drag this around and I'm going to make every single panel a windowed panel so that people could see these turtles. And we'll see if this becomes a problem. Now, if they need privacy, you can just fill some of these in so that people can't see from all sides, but I like that. Now it's time, we're looking pretty good. There are some staples that you have to have. We are going to just duplicate. They need to be able to drink. I'm gonna put it right here in front of uh, the window. 
And remember, you also need your heat map for water. You'll see that this is becoming an issue. We have the um, water filtration here, and we need to make sure that every water source that we build is within this sphere. We'll have to build another one as we expand, but for now, this is great. So they have water. And then we're going to go to habitat and we need to build um, food and water. We need to build some kind of food tray for them. So we'll build one um, that's like right here and one that's over here. So now they have food and water. And I'm going to then push escape. I'm going to go to animal trading. I'm going to go to um, animal storage. I'm going to click this check bar up here to select all of them. And I'm going to click send to zoo. Um, and we're going to select right here, Habitat 4. And they're scheduling the delivery. I'm just going to push escape to close this. And this is Habitat 4, which I already hinted. We're going to call this um, Turtle Town. And we're going to just unpause the game and wait for them to be delivered. Now, what's this say? This says um, education speaker is overlapping right here. So let's pause it. We need to see what's going on here. Now, these education speakers are overlapping, but that shouldn't be an issue because it's the same information. Let me make sure it is, though. This is Timberwolf. This is Timberwolf. And this is Timberwolf. Okay, so don't worry. Even though the speakers are overlapping, it's the same information about the same animal, so it's all fine. Habitat has no keepers assigned or free to visit. So we need to pause it, and we immediately need to hire a keeper that works on this habitat. We also need to put this habitat into a work zone. So we're going to go to zoo, and we're going to go to staff, and you can see we only have two keepers. So they are actually on an efficient workload. So let me see my work zones, and let me just see um, entry. Okay. So this is entry center right here. And it, is, it includes these buildings, but not this habitat. So I'm going to just um, click on the habitat to include it. And there we go. So now I've put this in here, and I'm just going to push escape. And that will fix the keeper problem. If we need to hire another keeper, we can, but this should be okay. We immediately want to click on Turtle Town. We're going to go into Maintenance. And remember to set all of the maintenance every month. Every month mechanic every month so that everybody's coming and checking on this as frequently as possible okay very good unpause the game it's raining all right and the turtles are in pause it so now the turtles are here you can click on them and you can see how are you doing and you can see what they think about their current situation they don't have a hard shelter they need it and they want more sand so let's go into terrain and let's paint them up some sand. I like this kind of coarse sand. Let's just give it to them. Uh, they do not want... They're okay with long grass, actually. And honestly, after that, they're fine with everything. They have enough. They could use some soil and some rock. They need a little bit more sand. There they go. And then they want some soil and then they need some long grass interesting they like a little bit of everything don't they all right so they're all within a reasonable limits so that's good everything is green and we need a hard shelter we just go to habitat and we're going to go to beds and shelters and we can give them a cool hard shelter appropriate to them uh, we don't need an aquatic This is a wood habitat that we've built, so we can just build a nice, um, you know, shelter for them that is over here. And I'm going to kind of rotate this around a little bit. Mm -hmm. mm, I can turn it. Yeah, but I'm going to push um, X and I'm going to use the uh, fine tuner. And we're going to go over here and just put this along this back wall. And if they want, we can, um, I'm going to build it and you'll notice, okay, immediately this will take up space, but let me unpause it. And this is not enough hard shelter for them. Like these are, these turtles are small, 
but somehow this giant thing is not enough for them so what we're going to need is to go to habitat and go to shelters which we are and build another shelter and we can build it like right there and i'm going to unpause it and what do you guys think is that better all right that's they have kind of um pretty intense requirements for a shelter so <laughs> let's build them another well that's too big um give me a basic one like right over here i'll put it where the guests can't see there all right so that's a lot of hard shelter apparently they want a ton there we go now we're in the green and then let's go ahead and do enrichment items but we need to um, filter this for species giant tortoise. And luckily, we have a little bit that we can build for them. We can build a dog ball. And we don't have... Um, we can build, like, a, a fun sprinkler. And they currently have almost enough toys. Let's give them uh, this fun ball. And then now they just need some food enrichment. I guess we can give them another dog ball for food enrichment. And then now everything is... They're happy. Oh, but they're too cold. Okay. So it's cold right now. So that means that we need heaters in this habitat. And we want to put them there. And over here okay and then uh, we can click on this and we can say what range do we want this to heat it up to so the ambient temperature is 52 and the current temperature is 86 now um, we've finished some research which is tremendous on the timber wolf and that means we're done so let's start researching that turtle And we have a free person also to research, but I'm actually not going to put her on research because even though we could, we want our vets to be going around and doing their duty. So the, um, oh, we finished mechanics research. So if I have everyone researching, they're going to be overworked. Oh, good. We finished some more barrier research. So we get, we're getting access to some better barriers. And now let's just click on the turtles and see how they're doing. They're doing great. Look at this, 92%. They want more hard shelter. They need some better enrichment. Uh, but that will come when we do research. I could just build another dog ball, I guess. I could just click on this and duplicate it over here. And then that should be, you know, plenty of that kind of enrichment. It is. And we'll go over to Habitat. Beds and Shelters. And we can build, like, a small little shelter over here for them. And then that's it. Now they have enough hard shelter. And we got a reward um, for reducing crime because of all those cameras we put in. And we got 2500 bucks for doing that. How about that? Awesome. Oh, and look. The, um, she had offspring. Let's see it. Look at this. We just had... I'm going to pause it. Look at this. We just had a baby wolf cub. Oh my gosh, the name is Embrace. That's exactly right. Don't you want to embrace this little Timberwolf baby? That is awesome. So now we're just doing great. We had a baby over here. We've got a new turtle exhibit. We're not done. We need, still need to put in signs and um, bins for collection. But hopefully people are enjoying this. Let's see what they say. Uh, they like the view of the Timberwolf. So things are going pretty well as we continue to expand our little zoo with another habitat and there goes a balloon all right so let's go back over here and look at our habitat but oops we got a little bit of research oh we finished aardvarks well look at that so we have finished timberwolf and aardvark completely which means we can get them all of the most fantastic stuff 
So we don't actually have any new animals to research. So we can use Yanni to work on um, some of the, the worst diseases. Um, and look at this. Many guests think that our tickets are underpriced. So it's time to bump this up a little bit. So why don't we go up to $8 for adults and let's go nine. Yeah, $10 for adults and $6 for children. I think that's good. Okay, boa constrictor also taking off. Now with the boa constrictor, let's check our exhibit. I'm going to click on this and you can see that we aren't full because the layout isn't good. But now that we've done enough research, let me zoom in on our boa abode and we're going to go to the layout tab and we've already built these um but we don't have enrichment level two yet so we need to research a little bit further okay fair enough now i'm going to grab this bin and i'm just going to control d to duplicate it because with our turtles it's time to start putting some collection bins I mean, just where people are congregating seems pretty wise. And everywhere. Everywhere that you can. Um, unfortunately, you can't there. But we'll do our best. There. Looks horrible, but it gives us money. All right, terrific. Additionally, we need some education. Now, this barrier looks terrible. And the mechanic's been requested. I'm going to get a mechanic urgently to go here the barrier status is down to 35 percent you can always check on this visually you can see how the barrier is just kind of like getting worn away it's just a disaster all right i'm going to actually copy this uh screen and we can put it right here to give people details about um but we need to click this very quickly and change this to be tortoises we don't want to confuse anybody and there we go. And then now I can just kind of duplicate this and, you know, put some more of these screens around to give people the full package. And let me pause the game. Looks like we have another, uh, we have some more vet research done. And we did the first level of turtles. Fantastic. Um, she's upset because she's stressed out. So um, now Tina doesn't like that people can see her and that's an issue. A lot of this stuff with the stress, look at all these people with the umbrellas, um, will be fixed when we can get some one-way glass so that, like, it for the aardvarks, they can't see out. They don't think they're being observed, but the people can see in. But we don't have um, the ability to, to build that just yet. We have to finish researching um, barriers further, and we're getting there. So that's just, uh, you know, an unfortunate reality until we get there. Now, we can build more things for them to kind of, like, hide behind, in, as it were. Uh, let's see. I want this to kind of... I'm going to put it here, but I'm going to slide it out. It's still attached. And then um, I'm going to slide another one over here. Yep, and I'm just going to kind of... Uh, Push X again and rotate this so it snaps a little bit. No. Oh, we got to turn off angle snap. Where is that? I don't want it. Um. No. Why are you doing angle snap on me? Is it really turned on for that? All right. Anyway, that's good enough. And let me just put some more education pieces for this turtle. I always put more than you need just because I want the education rating at our zoo to raise. It doesn't cost very much. And there we go. Then let me get a speaker. And I'll duplicate this. I'll put it right here for now because there's nobody. And then I'm going to click on this. We need to make sure that they're getting content about that tortoise. Great. 
And then I'm going to duplicate this and let's just drop in some tortoise information for people. Don't really want to overlap it too much, but it's okay. Now we have to be much warier about this in this region. And you'll notice that because of this path, we're going to have to do some... I'm not going to use the word surgery, but we need to click on this. And we're going to need to reduce the range to about here. And we need to click on this and reduce the range also to about uh, here. This way, there is no chance that there is overlap for the most part. It's still possible that somebody over here will look into this habitat and hear information about the turtle and be confused, but that's, you know, not as much as we can do about that. All right, and let's go ahead and select this speaker and reduce the range. Um, that's good. We're going to be more conservative on this path because I just want to avoid any kind of confusion. There. And let me just kind of turn this around and put it right here. Now this one we can make the range a little bit larger because we're not competing. All right, there we go. All right, so we'll just unpause the game. And now, oh, you know what? I do need some more benches. Make sure people can have a place to sit. Maybe they want to check out the, the turtles and relax. You, I will probably move these benches at some point. I don't have to have them all over the place. But I like to have them because people can get tired at your zoo and you want to make sure they have an opportunity to rest. Then also, let's go ahead and just um, grab these trash bins so that nobody makes a mess. There. Honestly, I think we're looking really good. Okay, so I'm going to push escape, and let's just check in on the turtles. And their nutrition isn't great, but we can go to animals, and we can bump them up to grade 2 food, so that's good. I think over here, look, you can see that they definitely repaired the barrier, and we've got grade 3 quality food, and let's just make sure everyone's as happy as can be. And there's a problem with the habitat, which is the temperature, and the animal is too cold. So we can fix that. We'll just duplicate some heaters. Put one in the middle there. That should take care of that for them. And let's go over here and check on these wolves. Um, the barrier is about to break. We're going to request the mechanic urgently. I mean, I have the mechanic here every month. Oh, you know what it is? Yes. Okay. So the problem is that if I go into zoo and I go, oh, oh, we got more boa constrictor research. Well, that's what I was just going to talk about. If I go into mechanics research, my mechanics can't get out because they're stuck researching. So I need to hire another mechanic to just be working so that people could keep researching. So always make sure that like if you are giving your vets or your mechanics research, they won't have enough time to actually get out so you want to hire some staff to accommodate that so i'm going to go ahead and hire another mechanic and i'm not going to give them a work zone they're just going to be like general mechanic and they'll go around and take care of stuff and let's just check on the wolves and the wolves are like unbelievably happy but they need some more food enrichment which we can do because we can go to habitat and we can go to um, enrichment, food enrichment. We're going to pick on filter. We're going to go for... Uh... Oh, they think the tickets are overpriced now. Okay. So let's pause it. So let's go down. We got a little bit too overzealous. Let's go down to $8. And then $5 for kids. All right, fine. 
but you can see we are up to 21,000. So we were doing a good job making some money. This is a timber wolf. So we're going to go to habitat and we're going to go to filters. And we're going to go to species and we're just going to go ahead and timber wolf it. And look at this. We can build all of these food items for them for food enrichment. And actually, that's all they needed. But I'll give them another rotation line thing over here. And then we'll unpause it and they jump up and they're like at 100% satisfaction. We finished habitats. Um, all right, so we've got even more research there. And, oh, it can't find research. Wait, what? This is overlap. Yeah, this is what I was worried about. So people crossing over here looking at this will have a problem. So sometimes it's really hard to get your education speakers positioned properly when you have habitats right across the way. And you can either just plan your zoo differently or you can really reduce the range. And I'm just going to make try to play it safe there. Hopefully, people get it now. Yeah, they shouldn't be as confused. All right, so... Let's say hello to this person. Now, we talked about staff a bit. Let's go back into the staff panel. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to pause it. Look how many of the staff did get up to that second star. So that's amazing. But we did hire some new staff who are at one star. So I'm just going to select them all again. And I'm going to $2,000 to raise their level. Perfect. We're going to do that. We still need another vendor. Um, and we need another uh, security guard. And another keeper. So we're going to go then to staff. And we're going to deselect this. And we're going to go security guard. We're going to go to um, vendor. And then we're going to go to keeper. Great. Unpause it. Now, let's see over here at the break room. Okay. Now, I'm going to pause it. Another thing you can do with your staff is go check out the staff room here. First of all, just look at this, and you can see it's inefficient. It's like it's got a room for four people to be on break. Nobody's in here, but that's okay. And you can click on the perk tab, and you can give people a benefit that costs money, but it's really not that much, and it lets them improve in some way. So you can make them more resilient against being overworked. You can make them gain happiness. Um, you can make them learn faster. Security staff will have better detection rates. Um, it, the guests they interact with become happier, or they recover faster. So I like... Um, protecting them against being overworked. You can choose one of them and just leave that as is. Now, I think that's fantastic. We've leveled up our staff, got a new habitat. We're giving the, the staff a perk when they do take a break. But one final thing I think might be fun is to just go over here into guest facilities and we can, now that we have some money, we could splash around and be decorative. And for example, um, we have right here, oh, this is an information center. Well, if you want, you can buy this for 2000, which is an information center. You know what? I was actually misleading you. That, what I was just showing you, this Planet Zoo Invo shop, this isn't a shell. This is an actual finished shop. This is why it's so expensive. So what we actually want to do is just type in the search under blueprints, okay, and look for shells. Oops, let me type this right. So I went down, instead of into the facilities tab, I just went to the right for blueprints, and then I went over here and I typed in shell, 
and you can see that there is merchandise shop, small shop, and large shop. Now, these are more generic, but they're way cheaper. Because 2000 is a lot, but I was wondering why I couldn't see through the front. Now, this doesn't say, like, specifically Information Center, but it just gives a cool look to the shop. And we all we have to do is just kind of push X and, and slide this around until it makes sense. And honestly, I think that... Let me look at that wall. This looks pretty good. You can see inside the shop. You can see her. She's going to be working in here. Um, it's decorated nicely. You could move this back. Yeah, there you go. And you want that back wall to be... Um, if I slide this forward, you'll notice how the cinder block starts to poke through. You don't want that to happen. You want that to be there. So once you could see all of the textures on this, it looks lined up on the top. Um, then you can just go ahead and snap this on and just say, bye. And it costs 515 but look how much better that looks. Now we have a Looney Bloons right here. So right next to it, I can push X, X and buy a souvenir shop. And I'm going to push X, I'm gonna slide this forward a little bit. Um, oh, but this isn't a shell. This is an actual shop, Never mind. Um, I don't know why it's showing up there, but no, 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 that's not what we want. Um, I just gotta click cancel, no, I would want this. Now, you'll notice these shops are right next to each other. I could buy the double shop the large one but they're not lined up perfectly i didn't use the grid so this is a good way to kind of make up for that and all we have to do is just get this lined up now you'll see how this this top part of the sign is poking through that's it's not correct we need to bring it forward and if you get it right you could see how these this even blends together, like the roof blends together, this blends together. Let's look on the inside just to make sure. Yep, you see all the Looney Bloons stuff, and let's just kind of rotate it around. And it's pretty good. It does need to go back just a smidge. Yeah, and then you, you'll you see that seam right there, but it's better lined up, and there we go. And now we have much better looking facilities right here. And the scenery rating is 91 for this, so pretty good. But you can build this up by putting more plants and flowers here. And guest happiness is good for this place. So we can start replacing the skins on more stuff. Uh, we can even start doing it on our staff rooms and things if we want. But I think this is a good place to end the episode. We've been doing beautifully everything is going well we're making a lot of money here um, you can see our star rating is moving up and onward and upward what is going on here um oh can't find an accessible research okay this is because i think let me fix this problem yes okay so arlene can't find a place to do research and this is because um oh <laughs> this is because i don't have enough i only have two research facilities built so we can easily solve this by just going to the research facility and building another one and let's just push h open up the heat map and look at negative impact on guests and i think i can fit another one in here without getting to them i'll just duplicate this and I'll put it right here yep nope it doesn't get to anybody and we can put it right there and I'm going to exit the group now we need to get this path to connect to that so we just go paths and you know we go to staff path and I'm actually going to kind of um, make this more narrow and yes I'm going to uh, delete the path that's existing here and i'm going to just build the path out from here and let it connect that's usually the best way to do it and there we go and now i'll unpause it and she should eventually figure that out and she did and we've got some overlapping issues but again this isn't a problem because 
these are overlapping about the same animal. Oh, no, they aren't. Oh, that's what the issue is. Timberwolf, 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 right. No, the problem is that um, people are walking by and looking at the aardvarks. And so let's just make this a little bit smaller. This one. If they see the aardvark while they hear about the wolf, they will get confused. So let's just shrink it down a little bit. There. All right. Much better. Okay, everyone. I hope you're still finding this series to be fun and useful. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.